with the mustache in it, though. Yes, I agree. I agree, Deborah. We are live. Okay. That was a very good introduction. So, uh, uh, well, <laughs> welcome to our uh, our first uh, video recording for the uh, AXS chat. And uh, my name is Antonio. I have, to, I have with me Deborah and Neil. So this is basically uh, our uh, first one. We are, we are going to start to to do a few of these recordings. We are going to have some guests to talk about uh, accessibility and uh, other inter interesting topics related with digital. But uh, I'm, I'm going to stop now and I'm going to ask my two colleagues uh, to introduce themselves. Neil, please. Hi, I'm Neil Milken. Uh, pleased to be here on Access Chat. Um, over to you, Deborah. Um, hi, um, I'm also really thrilled to be here. Um, I'm sitting in Virginia, and I know that Neil is in the UK, in London, and Antonio's in Ireland. So, very international um, conversation we're having. Okay, so Neil, what is uh, what is this chat about? Okay, so um, Access Chat is a sort of side project, really. I, um, it's a collaboration between the two of us who work um, at, at a large IT company um, in the accessibility and digital inclusion team, and Deborah, who's a, an accessibility consultant. But this is not our work. This is this is something that we're doing not for profit. We're doing it because we're interested and we've got a passion for this. So um, it's really uh, about getting the message out there about what companies are doing, uh, talking to people, show that businesses are contributing to making a more inclusive world, and highlighting where organizations do a great job. Uh, we want to really bring about a positive focus and because we believe that every effort in this in this area counts so um, what we what we were doing we were talking on Twitter and and we'd seen some of these other chats going on and you and I've been talking at work Antonio and and we thought it'd be a really great idea to involve someone that had uh, a big presence in the accessibility world that was on Twitter so we, we got in touch with Deborah and we've been talking about it for a while um, and we've finally taken the plunge so this is our first recording so um, welcome Deborah welcome Antonio welcome everyone that's hopefully watching um, welcome to access chat a x s c h a t at dot com we have a website um, and I think I'm going to hand over to Antonio. You can explain the format of how we're going to take this forward. Uh, and then uh, Deborah and I are going to um, interview each other, talk a bit, introduce ourselves a bit more and about the topic. OK, uh, we will do, do a, 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 a weekly a, a weekly Twitter chat. Uh, that uh, Twitter chat will be supported by a guest. So and on, on the week before the chat, we will be publishing the details about the guest uh, and with, with some questions in, in our own site. And then uh, on the day of the event, we will uh, launch uh, the video. And then after having every, uh, after the video, we'll move on to Twitter, where we will organize a Twitter chat based on the questions that we launched on the week before. So you always have time to prepare yourself. So when you are with us during the tweet chat, you are more comfortable with your answers and you have uh, some time you know, to prepare yourselves and, and to, to know a little bit more about the guest and ourselves. Excellent. And, and I think the thing is that, that we, we want to promote discussion. The whole idea is that, that the Twitter chat is going to be uh, something to stimulate people to um, take things outside of the normal focus. Um, yes, we're looking at corporates. Yes, we're talking at people that work in the corporate domain. But it's an area that's often not covered. And, and um, we, want, we want people to start talking about it, discussing, sharing ideas. And I know that, that Antonio, you're a, a Twitter chat veteran and you spent a lot of time um, involved in these, these things before. You've been part of the very successful T-Chat collective. Um, so, so tell us a bit more about your experience of, of Twitter chats. No, Twitter chat is uh, an online, a very informal on online conversation uh, where the main purpose is to uh, talk about a specific topic, engage with other people who are pa passionate uh, about this uh, type of, of subject, and uh, no, the, the, the Twitter chat is a moment in time, uh, but the conversation can continue after 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 the time. It's also a great opportunity to meet 
people who are interested on these topics is a good way to you know to create to create a network and uh, to bring uh, this, the, the the subject of accessibility out there it, it's it's important that we we find a, a way a structured way to to put the voice of accessibility in in, in one place uh, because at, at the moment there's not such a, a structure, uh, especially on Twitter, there's not such a, a Twitter chat that tries to aggregate and, and, and bring the best of accessibility to, to this type of format. So I'm really looking forward to your conversations and to the guests that you and Deborah are going to be able to bring on board. Yeah, and, and thank you. And I think that, that, that we're going to appreciate your you're, um, you're acting as the MC for this, you know, master of ceremony <laughs> for, for Access Chat, um, um, you know, manning the Twitter feed, welcoming everyone on board. You've got quicker fingers than I have when it comes to typing and tweeting. Um, so I am really excited. We've got some great guests um, lined up, um, which I'll talk about shortly. But I, first, let's, um, let's, let's talk a bit more to Deborah uh, about um, who you are, what you do, and um, really how how you um, got into accessibility. So, um, would you like to introduce yourself, Deborah? Yes, thank you, Neil and Antonio. So, um, my name is Deborah Rue, and I own a company called Rue Global Communications. And um, the, what we do for a living is we make sure that um, you know we're helping move accessibility and disability inclusion forward. So I do a lot of work with countries, with large international organizations like UNICEF um, and multinational organizations as well. And I um, do policy development and programs and just anything that's helping continue you know further the cause very active with promoting um, the convention on the rights of persons with disabilities even though the United States hasn't passed it um, but um, also am a volunteer with uh, G3 ICT which is very very active also on disability and accessibility inclusion and so um, and I love social media I just love social media so I'm all over Twitter I'm too active on it I know I'm too active but I love it I wrote a book about it following your passion um, and my passion for being in this business is my daughter um, I am passionate about my husband my daughter and my son but my daughter um, is 27 years old and she was born with down syndrome and we were just told oh such tragedy it's not a tragedy my daughter's been a real amazing blessing in our lives and an inspiration for the work that I do um, when she reached middle school we were told once again by the experts that she wouldn't work and I thought not my daughter and so I decided as a technologist in the banking industry for many many years um, that I would start my own business how hard could it be well it's really really hard by the way but um, and so I created tech access TEC access and I employed people with disabilities um, I had many technologists with disabilities all different kinds of disabilities and we, we helped uh, corporations all over the United States mainly move towards accessibility and as Antonio well and Neil you mentioned this as well had um, said briefly Many people think that corporations have made no efforts in accessibility, and it's just not true. Corporations are definitely in this conversation, and they're making some very interesting strides towards accessibility and disability inclusion. And it was interesting when Neil reached out to me and said, let's have a bigger conversation about this, and, and, and maybe a different conversation instead of bringing all the typical players in. Why don't we talk to people that are actually in the trenches doing the work, being creative, innovative, and, and making things accessible, and see how we can help up the conversation a little bit more. So very excited, very excited to be here in this um, venue. That's great. I mean, I, I think it's, um, it is exciting. A lot of companies hide their light under a bushel. Um, it's, it's not something that they talk about. Um, and also, I, I was very keen when, when we were talking about this initially, and I, I know you are too, that we've, we've both come from an assistive technology background now, um, as opposed to accessibility. What, what we want, what the intention here is to talk about 
the broadest church in terms of inclusion. Um, and I know that um, Tech Access, because I, uh, I, I've been following Tech Access for more years than I care to mention, um, funnily yeah. enough, we, 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 our, our paths have crossed a few times over the years, but it's great that we're working together now. Um, it, it's a broad church that you work with here and, and that it's, it's a wide range of things that we're looking at. So we're not just looking at the technicalities of web accessibility. Um, some of the things we'll be talking about, some of the people we'll be interviewing will be from organizations that take a completely different approach or we'll be looking in interviewing people about um, perhaps how they are doing things to help people on the neurodiverse spectrum rather than just does stuff work with screen readers? Does it work with magnifiers? Does it work with speech recognition? All of those things are tremendously important. They're my day job. You know, this is this is what I do day in day out, making sure that this kind of stuff works. But I'm also interested in looking at how we can uh, strategically take things forward. And, and I know you and I have had lots of conversations about this. And and you do a lot of work um, with big clients and 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 the United Nations and stuff like that. And it's what interests me is how we can bring this conversation out into the open and, 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 and that was really my intention in, in, in persuading you to come in front of the camera. Uh, I found that uh, one, one, of, one, of the, one of the best ways to keep uh, ourselves uh, uh, with the information that is happening in, in, in this topic is to follow specific keywords on Twitter, for example. And you came across a huge number of stories and they are no, they, they are uh, they are everywhere, and I, so I think this is a, a great opportunity to sometimes to go search for those stories and bring them here. What do you think about that, Deborah? I, I think that is a great point, Antonio, and I'm all about the stories because if we make this just about compliance, which we are very guilty of doing in the United States, it's just about compliance. Um, I, I don't think that we can really evolve with accessibility and, and we're moving past that um, more these days, but it is about the stories because I find that when I train people with developers, content developers, programmers um, on this topic, when you start bringing in the stories or you bring in somebody that's a technologist that's blind and using a screen reader and they're able to watch this person using a screen reader actually try to access their website or their software, it, then it becomes, oh, oh, this is not just about compliance. This is about, this is about people. This is about the story. So I think the way to up this conversation and to make it more and more important, and Neil, we've had lots of conversations about if yes, you're not have. blending accessibility into your process, you're not going to be successful. Many times at Tech Access, um, which Tech Access now is, um, is part of SSB BART Group, but many times when we were Tech Access, you know, we would go in and we would help these these multinational corporations, you know, become accessible. And we would tell them exactly what to do. We would test it using all our assistive technology and technologists with disabilities. And it would just be so wonderful. And we would encourage them to update their policies and procedures. And six months later, we would go back in. And they weren't accessible anymore. And so if it's not blended in at the process level, we're not going to be successful, which is why it's just so important that we're having these conversations and stories. Yeah, and, and, and it's, going to be, um, it's going to be one of the recurring themes, I think. So um, a little bit about my background. I came from an assistive technology background. I originally had no interest in assistive tech whatsoever. Um, I ended up falling into it. Um, I, I started working for a company that that was helping people with dyslexia. Uh, I'd got a history of dyslexia in the family. It was of interest. Um, found out in, in adult life that my, myself am dyslexic. No great surprise to any of the people that knew me, but I'd been denying it. Um, <laughs> uh, um, and, 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 and ever since, really, uh, it's been a driving passion for me to try and um, do work in this area. Um, why I'm, I'm, I'm involved in, um, in stuff like the, the Cognitive Accessibility Task Force for the W3C and, 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 and do a lot of the projects. It's 
something that I, I yeah I, I came into I worked in this field for 12 13 years now um, can't really see myself quitting it but I am very interested I came before that I was in a product management background in, in, in the internet and stuff like that and very interested in great products great usability and 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 really I, I, I wanted to shift the conversation away from specific stuff, looking at how we can do this holistically. And that's quite a dyslexic trait too. Um, we, we don't like detail very much, but we do like big picture. So um, so uh, it's really about how we can have conversations and, 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 and build with people and social media has just transformed the way that we are having these conversations. I'm, I am now connected with people all over the world where I can learn from them and learn from their experiences and these are you know these are fantastic people and and some of them you'll meet over the coming months as as we uh, interview more people that that are, are doing amazing things to change people's mindsets um, and 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 taking things forward so um, one of the, the people we'll be interviewing is a, a colleague of mine on the Business Disability Forum. And this is an interesting organization because they, um, they don't do a lot out in, out, out in public. They're probably not very well known, but within business, it's a, it's a great talking shop for um, organizations to feel comfortable about the, the difficulties they have implementing these kind of processes and the challenges that they face trying to do the right thing. Because actually, you find that, that, that most of the members really do want to do the right thing. You know, companies aren't there deliberately trying to uh, exclude people for the most part. I find that, that actually it, it's through lack of, lack of education, lack of knowledge, lack of not, not even lack of knowledge of, or awareness of disability, but lack of knowledge of the impact of what they're doing. Um, and, and, and so, um, these kind of organizations like the business disability forum, the U S uh, business leadership network, etc., uh, are, are giving companies an opportunity to share. Social media is the other opportunity to share, um, and, and we've got some of my colleagues from uh, the Business Disability Forum on over the coming weeks and months, who will talk about some of the exciting stuff that we're doing in terms of having the conversations and hopefully um, changing the the dynamic and 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 the the way that we approach some of this stuff by. Um, not being technical necessarily, but talking about it in the language of business and looking at how we can integrate this into to what we call BAU, business as usual. It, it you know, becomes something that's more mature and embedded in processes. Because like you say, Deborah, I've sat through many a time where we've audited products and, and, and gone away and it's all worked and you come back six months later and you're back to square one. So so you, re you really can't just do it in isolation. It really is something that we want to do um, holistically um, to, to spread that knowledge throughout the organization so that it's not in a little silo somewhere. Um, so um, some of the some of the people coming up over the next next few weeks. Um, I know it's near the end of the year, so we've got a couple of dates um, before we break for Christmas. We've got first guest, and he's a fantastic guest, he's really engaging, is um, is Gareth Ford Williams. He's head of accessibility at BBC Future Media. He is at Gareth FW on Twitter. Really engaging guy. Uh, I think you'll look forward to hearing how um, they make some fantastic stuff. Uh, at the BBC, it's generally very uh, up to date, very um, good looking, easy to use, and also accessible. And then we've got uh, following week, we've got hopefully to be confirmed yet, but looking good. There's John Wooden, who's enterprise architect at Ernst Young, who is uh, leading the work at the BDF to um, pull together uh, do a document and guidance on how. Um, big companies and organizations can create an embed accessibility policy. So um, that's pretty much it in terms of, of what I think uh, you know we'll be covering. Um, just want to remind people that you, you, you can find the agenda on www.axschat.com uh, and you can find us at, at accesschat.com on Twitter. 
Okay, thank you, Neil and uh, Deborah. And uh, I think we, it's uh, uh, we we also we know that you are going to talk at the uh, UN. Uh, uh, and uh, how, how's your mood for that? Uh, what's the spirit? Well, I um, even though I've been working in the field a long time and I've gotten to go to all these amazing countries, I'm still nervous about speaking before the amazing United Nations in New York City. So, um, um, and I know I'll be fine once I get there, but I'm just really, I'm so honored to be asked. And so I'm also looking while I'm there for some good people to, rep you know, to be presented um, during access chat. Um, uh, the day before, I'm going to do a presentation with UNICEF, who, you know, UNICEF is really, really stepping up to say, you know, we know we can do this. We're going to create policies. We're going to create guidelines. We're going to do training. And it's exciting to see organizations that big say, we're in, we believe in it, we want everybody to be included. I mean, obviously UNICEF's mission is to include, you know, make sure that children have a voice and are included in society. And there are many, many children with disabilities. So um, it's very exciting taking this to the United Nations. So um, I'm very optimistic about where we're going, but I think we got to tell the stories. We got to make sure all of the voices are heard. Sometimes in the United States, we're bad about thinking it's only about the United States. So um, I think it's very important that we listen to everybody and we learn from everybody and see what's happening um, everywhere else. And so um, we also, I think all of us are part of um, IAAP, which is an association that's trying to bring all of the accessibility um, professionals together too. So, you know, we're in a lot of these conversations. Neil's in different conversations, Antonio's in conversations, I'm in conversations. I think that's one reason why we're a good team. We all are listeners. We're story tellers and we believe that not there's no accessibility rock stars that hold the keys to all this it's all of us normal people just getting it done working on and included in the process and telling the stories I think that's what's so exciting about what we're doing yeah I think it, it's the collective power of people taking it forward so everyone contributes right Okay, uh, I think we uh, we can uh, close our first uh, you know our first uh, uh, no video chat, and um, we look forward to have our first guest. And uh, I would like to thank uh, Neil and Deborah uh, for being here, and we look forward to find you guys on Twitter. Okay, thank take you. care. Thank you. And Antonio. Antonio, before yes. we close, can we just do do one informal thing and make sure that we all say goodbye to Neil's mustache, which will not be here on our next yes. um, access no, chat. You know, okay. it's here for November only. It's a one-time only deal. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, for a I, good cause. Okay, raising money for men's health. Okay, thank you. Okay, take care. <laughs> Have a good weekend. Bye -bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. -bye. Okay. Bye bye. Oh, we had to make it funny at least. Right? <laughs> uh, in case people were wondering. <laughs> yeah, well, a couple no. of times you did twirl it. It's really funny. And of course, you know, <laughs> Americans would think, you know, we think all Englishmen have mustaches like that. So that's really.